Welcome to our next topic on the quadratic series, otherwise known as the T method. The T method? Yeah, I know. Well, I learned it at school many, many moons ago, just after the dinosaurs became extinct. And I thought it was standard practice, and yet I've very rarely seen other members of staff use this method to help them factorize quadratics. I've heard of the cross method, it's similar, but this works for every single case. So, follow to the end. I've done four examples, we'll see what comes out and hopefully this will allow you to find your factors really, really easily. There's no important language for this particular topic because it's a recap of what we've done before. So let's just look and see what it was we'd achieved in past videos. Well, so far we've discussed that quadratics is all about a U-shaped graph or an N-shaped graph and where it fits on a set of axes. We've decided if we wanted to sketch one of these things, then there are certain things we would want to know. Um, so we'd want to know our x-intercepts, our y-intercept, and our minimum in this particular graph. That would give me all the key points for the marks in any examination. Depending on how the quadratic is formed or how the question is given, will depend on what information we can glean from it. So if I have y equals x squared minus 4x minus 8, well, we know that in this form, which is the intercept form, this minus 8 value would give me my y-intercept. Why? Because the y-axis also has the equation x equals 0, and if we substitute x equals 0 into that equation, we end up that y is equal to negative 8. So the intercept form is really important because it gives us our intercept. In a previous video also, we've looked at the ideas of, well, how do we find this minimum point? So we can now use the above equation and complete the square y equals, if you remember, open a bracket, put an x in front of it, half the middle value, so minus 4 becomes minus 2, and square it. Right, so we've got to find out what this number is at the end here, so minus 2 squared would give me 4, I need minus 8, how to go from 4 to minus 8? Yep, I take away 12. So now, and thanks Alicia, I've got it sorted, our turning point here would become 2, comma, negative 12. Yep, 2, comma, negative 12. Remember, the value inside the bracket moves the graph in the other way than you're expecting. The one outside the bracket moves in exactly the same way. So that gave us our point here, gave us our y-intercept, and now we have our turning point, but we don't have these values here. Well, we're part way there. What we need to do is we've worked out now that it's got something to do with factorizing quadratics in our other form. Well, what was that other form I hear you ask? Well, if we have a few examples and work our way through, then hopefully you'll have a better idea. Let's start with x squared plus x minus 6 and recap the knowledge we had in our previous video. We came up with the idea that when we had something of the form x plus a multiplied by x plus b, that would become x squared plus a plus bx plus AB, or the value in front of the X is equal to A plus B, and the value at the end, the constant, is equal to A times B. Right, so if we apply that to our knowledge here, what do we find? Well, the number in front of the X is 1, so we know that A plus B is equal to 1, and we know the number at the end is negative 6, so we know that AB is equal to negative 6. Right, okay, so this is where we drew that T, and it's no coincidence that this is called the T method. Look where this is going. What number goes on the top here? Well, at the moment, it's minus 6. I'll be more specific with that a little bit later on, because when you have this 2x squared and this 3x squared, the rule becomes slightly different, but it actually still works. So if there's minus 6. I'm going to write minus 6 on here. Please don't think to yourself, oh, OK, it's just this number on the end. At the moment, coincidentally, it is, but it's not quite the whole story. Having found my minus 6, what I need to do is find the factors, because I know that when they multiply these two numbers, they get minus 6, and when they add, they give me 1. So I have minus 1 and 6, minus 2 and 3, minus 3 and 2, and minus 6 and 1. Now, which pair of these add to give 1? There is only one of them, and that's one, this one here. And so I can go pretty much straight away to say that, well, a is minus 2, and b is 3. And there we have our factorized form of x squared plus x 
minus 6. Seems pretty funky to me. One more example? I think so. Let's do the next one on the list. x squared minus 8x plus 15. Well, I'm not going to write all the theory out. We're just going to remember this time that a plus b is equal to this middle number here, which is negative 8. And we know that a times b is equal to this number here, which is 15. And I'm going to make sure I put this little plus here because that's actually incredibly important to me. What do we do now? Yep, we're going to draw our t. And we're going to write the 15 on the top. And we're going to find the factors of 15. Well, 1 and 15, 3 and 5, 5 and 3, and 15 and 1. Now, do we have any of these that actually are uh, uh, OK? We have a bit of a problem, Houston, because 1 plus 15 is 16. And 3 and 5 is 8. And 5 and 3 is 8. And 15 and 1 is 16. But we are looking for minus 8. This is one of those tricks. Remember? Big fat trick? Yes. Because this number here is positive, we know that a positive and a positive or a negative and a negative number will make a positive when multiplied together. So what happens if I make all of these negative? Well, hopefully you'll see the right answer because we get now minus 16, minus 8, minus 8 and 16 which suggests to us that well, I can use either of these values here and let's use those two. So I can now write that down to be x minus 3 and x minus 5. And there we go, we've now factorised our quadratic. x minus 3, x minus 5. And if you want to check in your own time, if you multiply these two out, you will in fact get x squared minus 8x plus 15. Right, well that seems to work. Mm, not actually in all cases. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to be a little bit more specific. I'm not going to tell you, we're going to ignore that a plus b, a, b business. And I'm going to come up with a slightly more general form. We know a quadratic is generally given by ax squared plus bx plus c. And so if we now use a real world of example, y equals 2x squared plus 10x plus 8, we can see that our value of a is 2, b is plus 10, and c is plus 8. Now we're going to use this t method idea. But what I'm going to say to you, and it does work in all the previous examples, which I might go back to a bit later on, is what you actually do to get the number on top of here is you take the first number, the a and the c, and you multiply those together. This will work in every single case where it can be solved using the t method. Watch how it works. So we have 2 times plus 8, which is plus 16. Find the factors of 16 is 1 and 16. 2 and 8, 4 and 4, 8 and 2, 16 and 1. And what we're trying to do is find two numbers that when added together give me 10, and yep, there we go, 2 and 8. Now normally you go, oh, awesome, well that now gives me x plus 2 and x plus 8. That's going to give me the right answer. Actually, no it isn't. All right, I know this is really bad. Let's just see what happens when I multiply this out. Well, x times x is x squared. x times plus 8 is plus 8x. Plus 2 times x is plus 2x. And plus 2 times plus 8 is plus 16. Which, when I add those together, I get x squared plus 10x plus 16. Which is absolutely nothing like, well, barring this middle number, in fact, what we were looking for. So we can't use this now. We can't use that idea because it doesn't actually work. So we're just going to put a big frowny face there because that doesn't quite work. Wouldn't it be lovely if it did? Hold on. You do actually know what to do now. Let's go back to a previous video where we were talking about the idea of factorising by pairs. We really like factorising terms where there are two terms or four terms or six terms. Anything with an even number of terms is really, really good. What do we notice here though? We have an odd number of terms. How can I turn an odd number of terms into an even number of terms? Well, we use this t method. We now know that plus 10x can be split up into plus 2x and plus 8x. I can move the 2x squared down and this plus 8 
And what I now find out is actually what I can do is rewrite our sum. I can turn three terms into four. It hasn't actually changed. Nothing's changed. This is still exactly the same equation or expression, but it's just got an extra term. Well, what do I do now? Well, we've got four terms. We like four terms because we can now factorize pairs. Well, let's see what happens. Well, I've got 2x squared plus 2x. It looks like I can take a 2x outside of a set of brackets. And what do I get? I get x plus 1. I've got plus 8x and plus 8, which means I can take positive 8 outside of a set of brackets. And what do we get? x plus 1. Hey, up chuckles. What do I notice? I notice I've got an x plus 1 in brackets here and an x plus 1 in brackets here, which means if I've got two terms, and we have two terms, I can now write outside what is common to both terms and inside a set of brackets, write what's effectively left. Well, if the x plus 1 here is moved outside, that leaves me a 2x inside. And if my x plus 1 is outside, I've got my plus 8. And lo and behold, there we go. I've now got my factorized equation. Should we just check that this works? Well, yeah, because x times 2x is 2x squared x times plus 8 is plus 8x, plus 1 times 2x is plus 2x, and plus 1 times plus 8 is 8. And if we simplify it, lo and behold, we get 2x squared plus 10x plus 8. Whoa! Which is my question. And it would appear now my pen is going to start playing up again. Well, let's try this again with the last example. We have 3x squared plus 18x minus 21. What do we do? Well, we draw our t and we take our first number, if you remember, 3, and our last number, minus 21, and we multiply them together, which is minus 63. Now, don't panic. Big numbers aren't necessarily bad. You know, we can sit there and we do, right, okay, well, our factors are minus 1 and 63 and minus 3 and, ooh, what's that going to be? 21. Oh, hold on. I don't actually need to go much further. I could, I could do them all, but sometimes it's useful just to keep an eye out on what's happening when you do this. And I've got minus 3, and I've got 21, which I know when I add those together, give me 18. So I found my two factors. We don't just go straight to the answer. We're going to split this up because 3 does not work in factorization, but 4 does. So that minus 3 tells me to write minus 3x. That plus 21 tells me to write plus 21x, which means plus 18 can be written as two things. The 3x squared gets copied down, as does the minus 21. Right, I've got pairs. What do I do? Yep, I can now factorize these individually. What can I take out of 3x squared and minus 3x? I can take out 3x, which gives me x minus 1. And what can I take out of plus 21x minus 21? Yep, plus 21, which gives me x minus 1. There you go, chooks. How many terms I've got? I've got one, two terms. Is there anything the same in there? Yep. X minus one is the same. So that can be written outside of a set of brackets. And what does it leave me? Well, again, if I've got X minus one, the three X is left. That can move inside. And if I've got X minus one and plus 21, there's plus 21. So this T method seems to work beautifully. So we just check again with that first example, make sure it actually works. Yep. Nice and quickly x squared plus x minus 6. What do we do? You multiply the first number, the number in front of the x squared. Ah, oh, there isn't a number. Yes, there is. It's the number 1, if you remember, and minus 6. And we write that on top of our t. So we get minus 6. Um, finding the factors, we get minus 1 and 6, minus 2 and 3, minus 3 and 2, and minus 6 and 1. We're looking for the pair that adds to make 1, because this number here is 1, which is going to be minus 2 and 3. So, so far, we're just repeating what we've done already. But let's carry it on. We know that this plus x can split up into minus 2x plus 3x. And the x squared gets copied down. And the minus 6 gets copied down. We've got some pairs. So let's factorize the pairs. 
I've got an x squared and a minus 2x. Mm, what is that? Well, we can take out an x, which gives me x minus 2. And I've got plus 3x and a minus 6, so I can take out plus 3, which gives me x minus 2. Well, I've got a term and another term. Do they have anything in common? Well, of course they do. They have x minus 2 in common, which means I need to look at what's left and write that inside my bracket. Well, there's an x that gets copied in, and there's a plus 3 that gets copied in. And lo and behold, there we have x minus 2, x plus 3. Is that what we got before? x minus 2, x plus 3. I promise you, it really doesn't get harder than that. Just make sure you always remember to multiply the number in front of the x squared term by the constant, find the pair that actually makes the middle number, and just split it up. As I've said before, we love the fact that this middle term can be split up into two more, and then with four terms, we can factorize. Our next video, we'll concentrate on now using this information to find our x-intercepts by solving quadratics. Sounds complicated? No, nah, everything in this video, exactly the same. You just put it equal to zero. Until the next time, have a good day.